Now I'm no machinist, but one thing that is probably quite difficult to make, at least from scratch in a home workshop, is a gearbox. Speaking of which, this is my gearbox, and in it I have most of the change gears for the new and the old lathe. Now most of these gears are going to have keyways to key the gears to the shaft that they're connected to. If they didn't, they'd simply spin on the shaft the second we'd apply a torque, and that wouldn't be useful in a lot of situations. However, keys aren't the end-all and be-all in design. You know, for one, it does mean that all the load that the gear is required to transmit is going to go through that single key. Maybe it's not something that you need to think about all the time, at least in a home workshop, but it's definitely worth knowing, especially if you're dealing with plastic gears. But in the same vein, the load that we put through the gear is not going to be all that well distributed. If we apply a load to the teeth, say on the other side to the key, all of that load has to go through the whole gear and then into the key. But I think the biggest limitation is that keyed gears, or at least things that are keyed, are usually designed to be held in place under load. I have seen a few exceptions to this, such as the lathe's lead screw, but that is an exception, not the rule. For most of the keyed things that I've seen and dealt with, they are generally fixed in place. And it's about now that I like to talk about spline shafts. Apart from being stronger, since they're effectively multiple keyways, splines are also able to move under load. A good example for this would be a drill press or a milling machine spindle. The spindle itself is essentially a spline shaft, and all the torque that gets transferred to it from the motor is done through a hub. And even under load, we can move the shaft up and down and still transfer power to it. And it's for this reason that you'll find a lot of splines inside gearboxes, including the very basic one that I'd like to make in a future video. The only problem is... Well, how do you make these? Well, external spline shafts should be quite straightforward, at least for the one that I want to make, but the internal spline is going to be a lot more complicated. This one here, for example, isn't much help to us because this one here is die cast, which I guess makes a lot of sense, since it means you can make this in one part and you don't have to do any finished machining to it. Well, apart from the bearing seats, but the spline itself is left as is. I obviously can't do die casting in this workshop, so that's going to rule this one out. Now after doing a bit of research, the most common method that I've seen is to simply broach them in one go. What you do is you have a massive broach with the complete profile, and you either push or normally you pull through the work, and that will cut the spline profile. Now that's probably fine if you're broaching thousands and thousands of workpieces and you have an entire factory dedicated to making them, but here in this little workshop, that doesn't really suit me. With that said though, I don't want to give up on broaching entirely, because I think I have another way of broaching a spline shaft. Remember when I said spline shafts are essentially multiple keys? Well, I really did mean it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the keyway bushing which I made last week for the keyway brooch and I'll set it up in the dividing head, making sure that the slot is vertical. I'll then rotate it 60 degrees and get a slot cut for a matching piece of key steel. We can then take the hub which we broached last week and we can use the key to now index the cutter for the next cut. And after doing several passes using the keyway brooch, we now have two keyways. We can then index the bushing over again, and then use this method to cut the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth keyway. 
And with that done, we've now cut our internal spline. More specifically though, this is a straight-sided spline, which I do want to be clear about. There are other types of splines, such as involute or serrated, but for this project, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible and stick to the most basic type of spline profile. Plus, I'm not sure if you could use this method for other spline forms, but for what I need, this one will work very nicely. In the same vein, it's also easy for me to cut a straight-sided spline shaft with a manual mill. I'm pretty sure that spline shafts are usually hobbed in the same way that you would hob a gear, but doing that requires a specific type of milling machine and a very special type of cutter, which I don't have either of. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to come in from each side with an end mill and essentially form the profile of the keys. And that, fingers crossed, is the key profile cut. However, there is material in between each spline which will need to be removed. And that too can be removed with an end mill. Now if you're worried about it having a flat bottom, don't be too concerned. We only need there to be contact on the flats of each spline and that needs to be quite precisely machined. But the material on the outside and sort of the inside of the spline isn't all that important at least with this specific spline profile. Now that won't be true for every type of spline profile, but that will be true for the one that I'm machining here. And that I think is a really good fit. There's not much movement and the contact pattern is on the side. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, spline shafts in a hobby workshop. Who says you can't do it? Overall, you know, I gotta call that a big success. At least for what I need, this is gonna work quite well. You know, obviously I wouldn't expect this to be used in say a car's gearbox, but for a small light duty gearbox like the one I am planning on making, a spline shaft like this is more than enough to get the job done. And I'm really happy that I'm able to make all of this in this small workshop with relatively simple pieces of tooling. Now for sure in the future, I am going to explore trying to cut other types of spline profiles using the tooling that I have here, but at least for the moment, I'm really happy with this. And that's about it for the moment. I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something new, see you next week.